Welcome to the general introduction covering orthographic drawing. In this first series of videos we will cover basic equipment, the gear and some tips on how to use it. Now you might say that uh, architecture nowadays we're using uh, computers mainly to do the production. However at the start of your architectural career it's useful to try and understand the basics um, with more manual or traditional uh, drawing and drafting equipment so that we can get to the essence of the principles of orthographic drawing without having to worry about the technical side of computer-aided drafting systems. Now most of you will have the basic gear comprising T-square, uh, adjustable set square, scale ruler, pencils and peripherals like sharpeners and masking tape and so on. It's important that we don't assume that everyone knows what the equipment is and how to use it. In particular if using the T-square, uh, if you're a right hand person then the T-square always goes up and down the left hand side uh, of the drawing board and you always use your T-square uh, on the sides and never at the top and the bottom of the drawing board because you can't always assume that the board is square. We use a wide variety of medium, in this case we're just using tracing paper, usually butter paper, tracing paper um, is what we use for most drafting and technical drawing. Now if you're left-handed of course then you need to swap the configuration over with a T-square running up and down the right hand side so you're operating it with your right hand side and, and using your left hand for the drawing. Now this will only work obviously if you have a parallel edge T-square. If you have some of the more traditional T-squares then you will have to get a left-handed T-square. Now we use masking tape generally now to keep our drawings firm and the other reason why we use a lot of tracing paper and so on is that we can work over the top of drawings, trace over and, and see different versions and improve upon one design to the next. Now we use uh, an adjustable set square, saves us from carrying a lot around a lot of different other angles and although it's perplexing a little bit to use it is reasonably simple. To adjust the, the angles or, or to generate different angles of the set square basically you loosen the adjustment knob uh, in the middle and the uh, scale slides back and forth and you can set the different angles according to the scale on the arc. Now you can see here that we've set the angle at 60-30 degrees so the main angle that's rising up from the T-square is at 60 degrees and the angle at the top is at 30 degrees. Some people find this confusing at the start, it's not intuitive the first time you use it. Easiest thing is just to draw a couple of construction lines so that you can understand which angle is what. Scale rulers are going to be your best friend for technical drawing and also for freehand drawing to scale. They're important when checking drawings, uh, measuring off drawings to check and more importantly to design. So the scale ruler is primarily a design tool more than a measuring tool per se. There are different types of scale rulers. There are the triangular type of scales with a different scale on each side and the flatter sort of oval shaped scale ruler which tend to have two scales on each edge and therefore you get two, four, six, eight scales usually on the one ruler. You can also get other specialist scale rulers that nest away but they're a little bit more unusual. Now here's an example on how to use the scale ruler um, and in this instance we're sort of measuring from a, a plan drawing which is probably not the ideal way of using a scale ruler but for the purposes of the demonstration hopefully it makes it a bit clearer. Underneath you can see here's a plan that has been printed out at a scale of 1 is to 100 so therefore to measure of the um, this wall which we've got the scale ruler on we use the 1 is to 100 scale uh, on our scale ruler and simply measure and you can see scaling at about 8 meters long that wall. The same project but a different scale of drawing. This time the drawing scale is 1 to 250. In this case we use the 1 to 250 scale to read the measurements and you can see measuring the same length of wall the drawing at a smaller scale using the correct scale that matches the drawing again we get a reading of 8 meters. And the same thing with reading larger scale drawings. Here we have a drawing at a scale of 1 is to 20. So we use the 1 is to 20 measuring increments on our scale ruler. And we can read the ceiling height in the vestibule here at uh, 2.25 meters. 
Architects will use a range of pencils, but they tend to favour the more traditional 2mm mechanical or clutch pencil. Now most of you would probably be unfamiliar with it you would probably be using either the standard sort of clutch or mechanical pencil or just standard pencils. The good thing with the 2mm mechanical is that you can get a different point on it and it gives a lot of flexibility and sort of expression in drawing both at sort of technical and also more freer types of drawing. The leads that you can get for both types of mechanical pencils are similar to the softness of the leads that you get with standard lead pencils. Typically the lead pencils will start at 6B which is quite a soft lead and move all the way in increments of 1 so 6B, 5B, 4B and so on right up to 6H. 6H pencils are quite hard they're aimed at sort of making sort of light construction lines the most typical hardness of lead is a, a HB pencil which is right in the middle of the spectrum but a lot of architects will use 2B and 4B pencils in their 2mm clutch pencil now sharpening the 2mm clutch pencil is a little bit bewildering at start. Usually use a um, barrel sharpener which has got uh, two registration holes and a main kind of throat where you put the lead in to get it sharpened. Now the process is quite simple. You just open up the lead and you kind of measure it into uh, these registration holes and so that's what you set the length. You'd notice there's two different types of registration holes. One is for a really sharp point and the other one is for a slightly rounded point. Once you've set the length, you put it into the main sharpening barrel and you turn the barrel around. And here we've got a reasonably sharp pencil but Finally, you'll be using a lot of ink pens. Again, because we don't do a lot of technical drawing nowadays, as uh, most of the production is done computer-aided drafting, but you wouldn't be using the refillable technical pens as uh, shown on the left-hand part of the slide. These are more the traditional pens which have a sort of a mechanical uh, motion inside that advances the ink and they're refillable. Fibre-tipped drawing pens are becoming a lot more common. Architects use them all the time. It is important if you're using fibre-tipped drawing pens for presentation, the you do get a better quality one, A, because the tips are a little bit harder and, and nicer to use, but also try and find an ink that is quite dense and won't fade, like a, a proper pigment ink. There are some fibre tip drawing pens that you can buy that are a little bit more expensive that do come with refill and also allow you to replace the tips, and they're probably a, a good bet as well.